Hi everyone and thanks for tuning in. I'm Sophie De Jong and I work for Atlas Professionals and I'm here to give you some tips and tricks to make sure you are well prepared for your interview and make sure to land that offshore job. Over the last one and a half years, I've worked as a recruiter for the renewables industry for a worldwide recruiting agency called Atlas Professionals. Atlas Professionals is active in 15 niche markets within the energy, the marine and the renewables industry. As a recruiter, I'm focusing on the white collar professionals within the renewables industry. I'm stationed in the Netherlands, where the offshore renewables industry is really growing a lot right now. One of our major clients just started the build of the first subsidiary free offshore wind farm in all of Europe. And Atlas Professionals has the chance to deliver the personnel for that offshore wind farm. So how cool is that? I won't focus on the renewables industry today, but I will give you some tips, some general tips for the offshore industry to make sure you land that position over there. And believe me when I say, I've conducted a lot of job interviews throughout my career, so I know what can go wrong. Before I start, I think it's important to mention that not only the ability and the knowledge are very important for working offshore, but also your personal skills. Make sure you highlight them during your job interview. Successful offshore employees are not only team players, they're also able to resolve conflicts in a sensible manner. And not only that, they're also organized about their lives and work. Professionals need to take responsibility for their work and communicate well with people on all levels. So in general, keep these traits in mind for your job interview. Now over to our five interview preparation tips. One, analyze the job posting. Two, prepare questions. Three, prepare answering those questions. Four, get ready to Zoom. And five, know what you want. Tip one, analyze the job posting. Read the job posting multiple times to determine what makes you a successful candidate for this job. Be sure to know what the employer wants and to answer to those needs. So uh, make a list of all the skills you have, the personal qualities, everything else that could be an asset for you to land this job and have that just in writing to make sure you can address that in an interview. The closer your qualifications will match the job requirements, the closer you are to getting a second interview or even having a job offer. Remember that for working offshore, essential are your safety awareness, the attitude, and your commitment. Tip two, prepare questions. Many employers feel confident when they have someone sitting across them that ask very thoughtful questions about not only the job, but also about the company. So make sure you know what you want to ask and prepare several questions that really can give you some insight on not only the job, but also the company, like what is the culture, what are the work rosters, yeah, anything you can think about what could be beneficial for you to know about this offshore job. This shows them that you've researched the company and you're very interested and well first about this position. Check out the website of the company you're applying to so you know what they do and you know how you can contribute. I would always suggest you also check out their mission, their vision and their values, but also look uh, at the safety section they have on their website. Next to this, know who's sitting in front of you for an interview. Are you interviewing at a agency, recruitment agency, and is there sitting a recruiter in front of you who's going to send over your CV to a company, or are you already at a company, and is the person in front of you a decision maker? That's very important for you to know. Google and LinkedIn are your best friends. Be sure to write down your questions as well, because a job interview can cause a lot of stress, and stress typically doesn't affect the memory quite well. So be sure to not forget anything and just write everything down beforehand. You can also use this sheet to write down important information the interviewer is giving to you so you can check that information after the interview ends. Bringing notes and taking notes is very important when you go to an interview. It shows the interviewer that you're well prepared for this interview, but make sure you do not write everything down. It's very important to maintain eye contact with the person who is interviewing you. Always let the interviewer know that you're taking notes, especially when you have a video interview nowadays, because when you are taking notes, you're looking away from the computer and the screen, so the interviewer could think that you're not really paying attention. So as a courtesy, just tell them beforehand. What should I ask, you may wonder. Well, besides the usual questions like what is the culture of the company or could you tell me a little bit more about the job description, I also have two additional questions that may tell you a little bit more about how the interviewer is perceiving you. A little bit of feedback, but also gains a lot of extra information that you could use in maybe a second interview. The first example you can ask at the end of the interview is, we've now had the chance to get to know each other a little bit better. What do you think the biggest challenge for this position would be for me? 
Asking this question not only gives you an idea of the impression the interviewer has of you, but also gives you the opportunity to adjust that impression if needed. Also, it gives you an extra information about the possible downsides of the job that might be important for you. Should this be too direct, you can also ask what are the biggest challenges someone in this position would face. Another example of a good question is, if I get hired, how will you evaluate if I've done a great job a year from now? This question will make the interviewer A, think about hiring you, and B, that being a good decision. Also, it will give you as an interviewee a valuable idea about what it takes to be successful in this job. Alternatively, you could ask what the performance expectations will be over the next 30, 60, or even 90 days of the job. Tip three, practice answering questions. Practicing questions out loud and also answering them is my third tip for preparing to a job interview. I don't think this concerns questions only, but also really how to promote yourself. There are always some questions you can prepare beforehand. The interviewer is most likely going to ask, well, tell me a little bit more about yourself or what are your strengths and your weaknesses? These are easy questions you can prepare beforehand. Prepare answering these questions in front of your partner, your parents, or even your pets. Having a short elevator pitch ready is really going to help you look confident presenting yourself during the job interview. Also, if you don't know the answer to the question right away, that's not a bad thing. Maybe have a glass of water in front of you so you can just take a sip and prevent yourself from the urge to immediately want to answer it. See, this gives you a little bit more extra time to think about your answer. What you can also try to do is repeat the question while answering it. So for example, when they are asking you, how do you manage to have a good work-life balance while working offshore most of the time? You can answer that question while, okay, I have a good work-life balance while working offshore because I do dot, dot, dot. Some of the commonly asked questions by recruiter in the offshore industry are, what do you think the most important attributes of working offshore are? What kind of career-related qualifications would you like to gain? Can you describe to me a situation you have dealt with which best demonstrates that you have the key skills required for this role? The company has a serious commitment to safety. How will you help us uphold this commitment? What does good teamwork look like to you? Tip four, get ready to Zoom. There's a big chance nowadays that your first or even your second interview will not be in person. Due to COVID-19, a lot of companies are conducting their interviews virtually. This does not mean you can skip your interview preparation. For an in-person interview, you make sure to dress to impress, arrive on time, and turn off your phone before you enter the room. But there are also some things you need to consider for an online interview. First, wear what you would wear to an in-person interview. Well, at least for the top part, even though you're in the comfort of your own home. Dressing professionally gives you a confidence boost, gets you into that interview mindset, and also gives you a good impression for the interviewer. Next, test the tool before the interview. Make sure you download the free software and also set up an account. It doesn't matter if it's Zoom or Teams, make sure you have an account and you know how it works. Check your connection as well. Make sure you have a spot where there's good internet and check the best spot around the house and also make sure to have a backup when your internet connection lags. A face-to-face -face interview usually takes place in a meeting room since they're quiet and you have some privacy. So make sure when you are interviewing at home, you also have such an environment. Go to a quiet room, maybe lock the door if that's possible and warn your housemates that you're having an interview and you should not be disturbed. Also consider using earbuds, earphones or anything to yeah, cancel out the echo and give you some more privacy. Most video calling software nowadays have the option to blur the background. I would really recommend using this because if you don't have a professional background or a clean space behind you, you can have the option and yeah, it would look more professional. But do keep in mind that it could affect your bandwidth. So if it's not an option, please do make sure that you are in a room where it's just a clean, proper place to have an interview. This brings me to my last point. Uh, consider your frame where you're in during an interview because I've interviewed people only seeing well their eyes or they're sitting too far away so I don't even see their facial expression so it's really important to keep that in mind if you do uh, your interview from a phone while the other person is doing it from a desktop or a laptop you always have to keep in mind to place your phone horizontally in the stand so you you're sure you're visible for everyone
Regardless to which device you're using, make sure to have some white space around your head. Why is it important for you to keep in mind how far or how close your camera is to your face? That's really because the interviewer can see your facial expressions, but also your body language. Because mimicking the body language of the interviewer is very important to have a good interview. Maybe if you've experienced it yourself, when you have a conversation with someone and you're passionate about something, you really like it when they give you the same energy back. So a smile when you are smiling, a nod when you are nodding, that's really important to have a really good conversation. So yeah, keep that in mind when you are having an interview to try and keep that body language a bit the same. So don't overdo it, just a smile or a nod when the interviewer does so really can give you a good impression. And remember, first impressions really count. Tip five, know what you want. My fifth and final tip is to make sure you know what you want too. What are you looking for? Because an interview is not only for the company to get to know you a little bit better, but it's also a chance for you to get to know the job a little bit more and to see if it's a perfect match for you. When you're going on an interview with, for example, a recruiter like me at an agency, make sure you do some research beforehand because we can't help you if you don't know what you want. So make sure you know some job titles you like, some job titles you do not like, and really some specific about what you find really important for your next job. So we know what to look for. Also be prepared to talk about your salary indication because salary is inevitable to come up in an interview. It may not be in the first one, but eventually before receiving a job offer, salary is something you're going to talk about. So know what you want, know what you're worth. And yeah, just be prepared for that question to come up in an interview. Getting questioned about your salary could be uncomfortable, but keep in mind that you spark an interest with this company because otherwise you won't be in an interview over there. So uh, keep in mind your potential value because they see value and let's be honest, they can pay for good value. Last but not least, be excited. If you want it, show it. Let them know that you would love to be there and love to work there, of course. A smile can really come a long way to it being a very pleasant interview and leaving a good first impression to the interviewer. Don't forget, you only have one time to make a good first impression, so be sure to make it a good one. To wrap things up, these are my five go-to interview preparation tips. One, analyze the job posting. Look for the attributes that make you a perfect match. Two, prepare questions and write them down. Three, practice answering commonly asked questions. Four, prepare your virtual meeting like a physical meeting. Five, know what you want so you can also evaluate the interview, company and job. Thank you for watching. I hope you're inspired to apply to one of our jobs in the offshore energy, marine or renewables industry on our website of atlasprofessionals.com. And of course, I hope these tips will help you rock that interview. If you do have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Cheers.